So you reached out to her to rent the vehicle yes. from her. Is that accurate? Yes. And this was the first time you had made this arrangement? Yes. Ms. Garcia, do you typically rent out or let other people no. borrow your car? This was kind of an unusual arrangement. Yeah, I had just got out of the hospital like three days prior. I had a major surgery. I was on bed rest for six weeks. So you weren't using the car anyway? I wasn't using the vehicle, okay. and I'm a good friend, so I just said, go ahead, use it. So, Ms. Paxton, what happened when you took the vehicle? So I called her and asked her if it was okay, you know, and she said, sure. So um, I... I, don't, I got over there somehow to her house. I'm not sure, I think. All right, and this is the vehicle, by the way, yes. before it was crashed. A nice car, an Audi, and it looked like it was in good condition before the accident. And I had also had the person who took the car. They were, they, it was him and his sister. They were staying with me. They didn't have anywhere to stay, so I was letting them stay with me. And the gentleman asked you if he could borrow no. it? No. No. Okay, what happened? So I, I took the car home that night, and I had it with me at my house, and I was actually working. I worked the next day. I was actually at work. I was working from home. It was during the pandemic when it had first started. All right, I want to take a quick look. This is plaintiff's evidence exhibit A. We just saw the car, how it looked for. Yes. when you gave it to her. And this is what the car looked like yeah, and I after. No idea what it looked like because I wasn't there. I was at work, actually, at work, working when it happened. So you said in your answer that one of your friends did borrow the car with your permission initially. And, okay, so the next morning, um, I, had, I was going to pay rent. I had just gotten my tax return. And so I was just going to pay a couple of months of rent in advance. And um, so I had asked the friend to um, go get my rent money for me. Okay, so you gave him the keys. Right. So he returned okay. with the rent money. He came back with the car. He came back with the car. And then he took it again. Yes. He, the second time without your permission. Right. He like skated out, like without me. I didn't even know he had the keys. I wasn't paying attention because I was actually at work. Okay. I was working. So. Ms. Garcia, it's your understanding, I took it from your complaint, that in fact it was not this other gentleman driving the car, but that it was Ms. Paxton. Why do you believe that? Because the police called, uh, got a hold of me and wanted to know how, if she was supposed to have my vehicle legally. All right, so they called you from the scene. Yes. This photograph that we have is actually from a traffic alert on Twitter from the police. And they mention in this alert that the driver has been detained for a theft, presumably because they thought at first somebody had stolen your yes. vehicle. So, Ms. Paxton, how did you find out, according to um, you, that the car had been so crashed? First, I received a text message that from, from my friend that said, I crashed the car. I said, what the... What yeah. the heck? And I was actually right in the middle of a call from work. I had to pause the call. I had okay, so to. So did you go to the scene? No, I never no, went to the scene. You never at all. went to the I scene. I never went to the scene. I never saw the car. I never none okay. of it. I just. So if the car was in your possession at the time, why should you not be held responsible? If it was someone with you who took the keys and drove it, why should Ms. Garcia be held responsible for that rather than you? Well, I, I don't think Ms. Garcia should be held responsible. I think the person well, who. But was she's got the, the wrecked car. vehicle. Right. I think that the other person should be the one that's held responsible for the car. Okay, have you made any attempts to work with that person? Yeah, yes. To... Well, so he had a 2006 Toyota right. Corolla. Before you go there, let me ask you. Ms. Garcia, do you know the gentleman who was alleged to have been driving the car at the time? No, I did not know. Y Never do you have any idea who he is? Did not know who he Sitting is. Sitting here today, do you know his name? Now I do, yes. Now you do. I don't but... know his real name, no. Oh, you know some name that <laughs> yes. they gave you? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever borrowed this man's car? No. Okay, so Ms. Paxton, then you have a very crazy story, I'll put it, in your answer about Ms. Garcia borrowing this individual's car. Well, um, uh, he gave it to her. This is what I've been told. I don't by, know. Been told by whom? By the, by the gentleman. Who... Okay, so this is hearsay, but let's go ahead and yeah. hear what you were told. So he said he had given her his car to drive because he felt bad about wrecking her car. Okay, so... how did the two of them even communicate with each other? Um, after, okay, so... I got called by the police officer from his phone. The police officer called me from his phone and said, Miss Paxton, did you give the, this gentleman permission? I was, I was like, no, I didn't even know he had left. I had hey, but no... But how did the police even know to call you? Because he, the, he told them to call me. So he, he... said, call Miss Paxton, but it's not her vehicle. Yeah, no, the, the officer didn't know, didn't know that either. I said, this is actually not even my car. Well, no, I they was... did know that because they called Miss Garcia. Well, I bar well, after, I mean, I found out. So I borrowed, I told the officer on the phone, this is all as it was unfolding. As it was as right. it was unfolding, so yeah, they had my friend. They had your friend. He yeah. was with the officer, and the officer called me from his phone and said, um, "So, Miss Paxson, did you give him permission to drive the car?" And I was like, "No, I didn't even know he had left." 